He say, she say, we say, I say, hearing out them points of views when I see it my way. Yes, it goes, yes, it knows, maybe so's, probably not. Shills and coulds, do's and don'ts, your woods and wants is how you rock. Politicians and religions on your house or are you written? Is you married? Is you single? Met an interest when you mingle? Turn out to be someone you into. So, how long before the bed get wrinkled? When they trippin', is it time out or do you whip them? Opinions and decisions, hunches, intuitions May or may not get it, cause people's experience different Check the prejudice at the dope Speak your mind, you get the flow Tell the truth if it's sweet or sour Cause the hour we spittin' that fire Hello everyone, this is Spin Fire. You have to be over the age of 18 to listen to my channel, visit my videos, and make sure you read the disclaimer in the description below. I use aggressive language, aggressive tone, plenty of cuss words. This is Spin Fire. What do you think we're going to get? Let's get into it. That all the heartache and all the trouble he's going through right now and has gone through in the past, and I just believe that sometimes we're a little too, too quick to judge. Take my hand girl, and walk with me. I was too quick the to judge. Floor. Let me watch you, let me touch you, let me, you, you, let me hold you tight. I said, I want you to look at me too. We can do this all together. Just go with me and cut the spread. I want to show you a good time. Banks, okay, and as you can see, they muted him once he started talking about R. Kelly, and I found that to be very disturbing. But I was able to make out what he was saying, and I hope you guys were able to make it out too. Um, since then, Doug Banks has passed away. Okay, a few years back, he was hit by a car, I believe. I'm not for sure. Please fact check that yourself. Um, and Ricky Smiley used to work for him back in Chicago back in the day. We're going to hear Ricky Smiley talk about this and the hypocrisy on his ass too. Let's get it going. Mm. 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 Are y'all listening to the show? Yeah, Nevin, I got fired. <laughs> I got fired for speaking out. That's what started the process of me getting fired. They didn't, they didn't, Chicago was a, a major affiliate. I think we was on GCI at the time, and they was carrying Doug Banks' morning show. So when I spoke out against R. Kelly, and they was getting ready to do some kind of event and they were trying to get R. Kelly to do it. So what they can't have, they can't have a comedian on your radio show speaking out against R. Kelly and they were trying to use him to do an event. And uh, that started the process. Next thing you know, after I got my first official paycheck, uh, my attorney called me. He said, hey man, they're going to go in a different direction. And um, so it was like, man, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something about that R. Kelly situation. Man, all them folks ain't finna wake up and just all of a sudden accuse them of all this stuff. I know one of the girls, she used to work with us at 97.9 The Beat in Dallas. We have been knowing this for years. We knew this way before that came out. As a matter of fact, when I was on the Doug Banks Morning Show, I spoke out against R. Kelly and I got fired. Eventually. Because the program director in Chicago said that we was getting ready to do something with R. Kelly and they didn't like my comments and eventually, um, eventually dog, they got me out of there. And I ended up losing my job because I spoke out against R. Kelly. So, you know what I'm saying? What I've been saying for years, what I've been saying for years, cut it, cut it, cut it. A shirt like that on stage. Hell to the no. ah! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. That shirt. Right you didn't have to say it like that, <laughs> Mr. Kelly. Oh, oh, Kelly, in the studio, I asked him, would you wear that shirt right there? He says, hell to the no. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you dance in your casket and you go up and you're standing at the gates of heaven. And if you don't put Gary's shirt on, you're gonna go in hell and burn forever. Would you wear that shirt? Hell to the no. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh, this might be your opportunity to go on the road with R. Kelly and blow up. You always try to get me to do that. Right, you sit right here in front of R. Kelly.
<laughs> Come on, give us a little bit. Okay. Um, all right. I sing because I'm happy. Yeah. I sing uh-huh. because. Back in the day when I first started coming out, I, mean, I might have felt like, man, you know, I'm not getting out there. But I think that that's just what it is. It's not a matter of not appreciating me as an artist. It's a matter of not knowing. We're not all sitting around. I know I ain't sitting around looking up all the albums in the world, you know, trying to find every single song in the world. You know, we're not doing that. It is to the responsibility of our record labels, our team, um, and ourselves. R. Kelly had an interview at the radio station, and he was like, I'm throwing a party for my sister, Selena Johnson. And so that's when it started to kind of be the thing in Chicago, Selena Johnson being the queen, R. Kelly being sort of the king of Chicago. It's not your fault that you made a baby to bump and grind, or it's not your fault that I Believe I Can Fly was your graduation song in high school, and you have fond memories of high school. So if you want to play that song because it's related to a memory that's fond for you, now you got to be nervous. You can't even have a fond memory. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in, in that respect, I do feel like if there are memories that you have created and they're attached, because he has wonderful songs like Touch the Dream. He got gospel albums. He has a lot of great positive records on the other end of the spectrum. R. Kelly Robert has written lots of sexual records. And that probably feels uncomfortable. And that we now people feel like, am I contributing to that message? So in that way, it's fair if you don't want to listen to it. Like for me, I am your woman has some suggestive lyrics in it that I was like, I can't sing this. Tell about some I've been dealing with you since sweet 16, woman enough to let you raise me. And I felt like for a long time, like if I get on stage and sing that. What am I saying? And how, if there's women in the audience that have been sexually abused, and I've seen those lyrics, and they know he wrote that record, what am I doing? What am I contributing to? So I, for a while, and, and it's still out, I took it out of my American show. Okay, so Selena, you mean to tell me that R. Kelly was the only one that made sexual records. So Prince ain't never made sexual records. The Isley Brothers ain't never made sexual records. Smokey Robinson ain't made, never made sexual records. Marvin Gaye had never made sexual records. Who else have made some sexual records? Rick James ain't never made sexual records. Who else made some sexual records, you guys? There's a whole lot of them that made sexual records, Selena. So what are you talking about? And this is why, and then somebody going to think who's a victim, going to think, so victims don't listen to no sexual records. Oh, they only listen to him when it's R. Kelly because he's the only one that's accused of it. Really? Really? Really, Selena? Well, since, let me, and this is what she had on, on Unsung when she was talking about this because you're a victim. You're a victim, right, Selena? Right? Am I, am I, Please tell me, because you know I'm going to break this shit down for you, you guys. You know that, right? This is what Spit and Fire do. You know I'm going to break this shit down. Let's roll back that tape that I just showed y'all about Selena. Because she said that she don't want to talk about or sing about sexual songs. And I tell you, made sexual songs because she don't want to sing it. And there may be victims out there in the audience. Okay, because victims don't listen to sexual songs because they've been victimized. What fucking earth are you living on? Please, someone, okay, you subs, this is where you come in at. I'm going to need you to take this link and flood her channel, especially Fox Soul and everything she belongs to, okay? And make sure you go on Unsung and flood, flood this too, because this definitely have to be, okay? And this is their clipping. This clipping does not belong to Spitting Fire. The clipping that I just showed you belongs to Unsung, okay? Because I know they're probably going to strike me after they see this shit, okay? But it's going to be out there. There is going to be. So even if they strike me, make sure y'all keep posting it and 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 posting the video again and posting Posting it and 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 posting it. And if you want the clipping, 
okay, that I have of unsung, so you can keep posting it and then or whatever. Make sure you let me know. Anyway, we're going to sit up there and li listen to what she said again before we get into some really deep commentary. Let's get it going. You know, trying to find every single song in the world. You know, we're not doing that. It is to the responsibility of our record labels, our team, um, and our staff. So, the thing that I wanted to break down into all of this is that Ricky Mott Smiley was saying that he was fired for the Doug Banks Morning Show because he sp spoke out against R. Kelly. And they couldn't have nobody speak out against R. Kelly. Now, I don't understand how he felt that that was R. Kelly's fault. You understand what I'm saying? But the fact that the matter is, is that R. Kelly is from Chicago. You were working from a radio station in Chicago. You was in his territory. So it has nothing to do with R. Kelly per se, but they didn't want to risk losing their base, their fan base over your ass then. It has nothing to do with uh, R. Kelly. Second of all, and now you're talking shit in 2019, right? So you had uh, that show in 2019, and this is when R. Kelly was going through these wounds and being arrested and things like that after surviving R. Kelly, of uh, the radio show that I showed you that when he said that he was fired from the Doug Banks morning show, when he was combing his beard and everything, and he was talking about that, right? So that was in 2019. So the video I showed you guys before that was in 2016, which is three years prior to that, right? And R. Kelly was on his show, Dish Nation, okay? Dish Nation. And so I'm thinking, wait a minute. He on Dish Nation in 2016. Everything was all fine. This was still after the uh, Doug Banks morning show, okay? This was all this was within that three years. So he, he had his show then in 16, okay? 17, 18, 19. And I, from what I'm understanding, it's still comes on so you mean to tell me that you had him on your show you felt this way about him being uh about being fired over him and then when he's down and getting all these legal rules oh i said it i said that is so fucking hip hop you know and then I, you know, when I do these breakdowns, I don't know ever know what I'm going to get. And actually, I never know that I'm going to do a breakdown. Like, I never know that. I never know what is going to happen or what I'm going to come. It's it's like putting pieces together, like a puzzle. Like, it's I never know what I'm going to get. You know what I mean? Like, I, I put this together. It's like connecting the dots. And I'm just like, wow, I came across this show. And then I came across him talking about R. Kelly. Then I said, well, I wonder if R. Kelly ever been on this show. Because I'm thinking, if you felt that way, why would you have him on your show? Not to mention that you told Portia, go on with R. Kelly. You know, this your way of blowing up. That's the same thing these girls' parents were doing. That's the same thing. Go with R. Kelly. You see what I'm saying? Everybody pushed the girl off on R. Kelly. But yet, if she don't get her way, he raped her. This is what was going on. Whether they women or they had claimed to be underage or whatever. Everybody wanted to push somebody up on him. Yeah, it may sound like he's joking, but he was serious. Because if he wasn't serious, she broke out with that song, Eyes on the Sparrow, real quick. What? Why are you trying to throw me? Um, Let me hear what you got. Eyes on the Sparrow. I mean, she got the breaking, didn't she? You feel what I'm saying, you guys? If you had any doubt in your mind right now, you need to sit up here and be having a third eye now. You need to pull back and say, you know what? I don't know about all this shit. I don't know about the surviving R. Kelly. I don't know anything. Because here on Spitting Fire, she been breaking down stuff. She been connecting the dots. And let me tell you something. This And it's common sense. This is not things that I've made up. This is not things that you even have to fact check. This is things that come out the people mouths themselves. This is things that is out there and pictures with people themselves. This is nothing I do. I don't do deep fake. This shit is all on Google and everything else. All these deep fakes ain't going to be all like that. You get what I'm saying? It's all on different sites and everything. It's all on the sites into which the people got the um, images from too. So what I'm telling you guys is that this stuff is not made up. This stuff is so easy to connect that some of it you don't even have to fact check. 
And that's just the thing that I want to explain to everybody. Is that if you use common sense, okay, and not go by emotion, the feeling, and everything else, you want to know better. And this is what I wanted to tell you victims. As Selena was talking, you see how it didn't make any sense? You see how she had a shirt. And I'm not throwing Tupac under the bus. Because that wasn't the point of me showing the arrows point to her shirt. But she cares about victims, right? She cares about victims, right? So, is he the only one? Because right now he's been detained pending trial. And these are just allegations. Tupac was actually, you know what I'm saying, accused and convicted of rape. And that was bogus. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in defense of Tupac too. But I'm just saying, if you're for victims... Why would you have on a Tupac shirt talking about R. Kelly, though? As if this man that you wore wasn't even convicted of sexual assault. Because you're supposed to be helping victims. You see, victims, how I tell you that they're making a mockery of you and the hypocrisy and all this, and you guys don't get it. But the thing of it is with people, and a lot of people with this R. Kelly sector and in the world, you don't like being wrong. It ain't the fact that, you know just what happened to you it's the fact that you already got your mind made up with him and so you want to ride with it that's some whole shit i hate to say it you know what i'm saying because that makes people not even sympathize with you being a victim when you can be that salacious to say okay well i know i've been a victim but if he's wrong i don't want no but i don't want to become a predator of false accusing somebody who have to go through some heinous experiences and they didn't really do anything because that's hypocrisy. You said somebody took your body and took your self-respect and took your um, ability to do to have control over your body and your life, you know what I'm saying, or your consenting, but yet you willing to make a man, let a man go to prison falsely and have him endure whatever it is that he endure and he's innocent all because of your ego? Really? Like, really? Like, this is what you're doing? Because you're no better than the man who actually really raped you. You, you ain't did nothing but become a rapist yourself. Because if he gets hurt in jail and is falsely accused and you know that all because you somebody did something to you, you became a rapist. Okay? It's all about being an accomplice to rape. You are an accomplice to rape, which means you go down and get the same penalty as a rapist. In other words, if you are accessory to murder, you can go and be accused of accessory to murder. You get the same amount of time. You can't be accessory to rape. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? You're no different than the person who actually raped you. You're that person. You became your predator at that moment. That's something you need to think about, America. Fire out.